Hi there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK, and I am welcoming you to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing, you might want to subscribe, like, and share. If not, you can just listen. Um, for those of you of my current subscribers, thank you for subscribing, and all my new subscribers, thank you for your support. Um, today, I decided to talk about a video I was sent about education. Um, there's a gentleman in the video which I'm going to show you. It's a three minute video. And he says that with the advent of, you know, automation, artificial intelligence, Google, YouTube, why do kids need to go to school? Why is education even necessary? So I'm going to show you the video and then I'm going to put my little take on it. OK, and your comments, of course, would be appreciated as usual. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about America, but it's, it's outdated. Can it's you? outdated globally. It's outdated globally. The Internet made it outdated because information is a commodity and the school system was built on me memorization of information. Why do I have to do any math? I have a calculator on my iPhone that can give you any math. I don't need to know anything. I can ask Siri and Alexa in two seconds they'll give me the answer. You know, who cares about the periodic table when I can tell you what, like it's just, it's so uncomfortably outdated globally because it's predicated on memorization of information in a world where we have information at our fingertip within a second for zero cost. The whole thing's dead. Uh, it's the parent's responsibility. It's the parent's responsibility to not buy into the self-esteem wrapped up in your child going to a top university. You don't need to boil the ocean. Parents need to make sure their kids are happy. If you just put, if we all collectively actually gave a crap about the happiness of our children, it would fix itself. Unfortunately, we care more about the judgment of our contemporaries about what our children are accomplishing more than caring about our children. This is an issue of modern day parenting and insecurity and keeping up with the Joneses not a school system problem. Caring what other people think. Too. It is the devastation of our society. Yeah. Because so many people watching this will be like, no, you need a university degree. You need that to fall back on. What fall back on what? Yeah. Every company's not requiring a degree to get hired anyway. The greatest companies in the world, Amazon, Google, are no longer requiring degree anyway. So what are you falling back on? Now, you know, that's like saying you need to keep a horse on hand in case the car doesn't work. It's ludicrous. It is ludicrous. It is ludicrous. Yeah. And it's completely predicated on the framework that the parent grew up with, and more importantly, the judgment that their parents are putting on them or how they want to keep up with everybody else. Because the people that they eat dinner with at the country club on Sunday night, their daughter's going to the big university, and they want... It's just ludicrous. It is sad. I'm a byproduct of parents that were strong enough to not care about what other people thought, which is why I'm happy. And I would like to use what the gift my parents gave to me as something that I communicate to the world, hopefully inspiring one parent to give that gift to their child. Yeah, what do you say to that entrepreneur, that young entrepreneur at school, hating school, wanting to leave school, but has to stay at school? What do you say to them? Enjoy the vacation, because you're going to work the rest of your life. Two... Don't be a hypocrite. If you're such a tough guy or gal, stop taking mommy and daddy's money. If you're such an entrepreneur, go buy your own iPhone. Start practicing now. The quicker a child gets off a parent's payroll, the more likely they will be happy in life. <clears throat> so, so what he's saying is, is that, you know... The internet, you don't need education. Well, I beg to differ. I mean, he's basing it on... <coughs> I always have this bloody cough every time I decide to do it. <coughs> every time I decide to do a video, I start coughing. Anyway, so um, it's almost like he feels that education is based on academics. And he's not looking at the bigger picture. It's not really about, you know, getting that certificate or that diploma or things like that. I mean, 
superficially it is. I mean, a lot of people, that's what motivates them to go to university, to get that degree and stuff like that. But if that is your only source and the only reason why you're going to university, you're going to be very disappointed if at the end of your university, it doesn't give you what you want or what you expected from it. I mean, people who do PhDs, they expect to become doctors and they expect to have, be paid high jobs. And a lot of them are coming out of university and not getting jobs. So that's going to be a disappointment. No, the, uni the, the schooling and education system is about socialization, it's about discipline, it's about boundaries, it's about convention, it's about tradition, all of those things. And if 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 we were to just rely, I mean I asked a boy today, do you think maths is useful for you when you go out into the world, you know, when you're not at school with the advent of calculators. He said, but suppose I don't have a calculator. You know, the way that they teach me at school means that I've memorised that and I can stand up for myself and I can go into a shop or I can go anywhere and calculate something for myself. Why would I need to rely on a calculator? You see, the way that that man is talking in that video, it's making the brain extremely lazy. It's also kind of saying, OK, I can do all of this thing, all of these things by myself. It's a very isolated way of learning. It also means that you're learning one style, one type of um it's like if you want to learn something, like suppose and I want to learn about Shakespeare. So then you go on the internet and you get to know about Shakespeare. But what this um, boy also said is that you don't even know if they're telling you the truth on YouTube. This seems like also that the young boys and girls going to school, they put a lot of faith in education and trust in what the teacher tells them and trust in the literature and trust in the books. Now we as adults know that that's not always the case. We can't always trust what's written in the books. We can't always trust what the teacher tells us because things have evolved, things change, history changes, there's always new information that eradicates the information of the past and stuff like that. But the premise is that um, from people, from young people who go to school, they think it's important because one boy said uh, physical education. And what is it about physical, physical education? I said, can't you have physical education at home? And he said, well, not really, because they train you and they teach you how to perform. There's also the teamwork aspect of it. There's also um, the discipline. There's also collaborating with other people. So you're, it's not just about physical education. There's a lot of skills involved. So when you're thinking about that gentleman saying, oh, Alexa, tell me this or Google, tell me that. You're missing out on a, a lot. What of would you stuff. like me to tell you? Oh, you see what I mean? Bloody phone! I'm going to switch it off because I don't think the other one does that. Yeah, let me just power this off because this one is a bit more sensitive. Yes, yeah, so, um, yeah, so when they say Alexa tell me this or Google tell me that, of course it jumps up and tells you what you want to know, but it's just one person's viewpoint, one machine's viewpoint. So it was quite interesting talking to people and uh, finding out, I mean, another boy, um, I asked a couple of boys about their view about the school system. And I'm going to read that first before I read the stuff that the experts um, talk about, because I like to get it from the horse's mouth. I like to get it, you know, off the ground. So, um <clears throat> I've always already mentioned the physical education, free up space storage. Um, I've also I've already mentioned the physical education that training is important for teamwork, competition, being able to collaborate with others, making friends, and learning about other people. I hate it when I get these little reminders. Anyway, hopefully I can do this video. I asked if they needed 
the school for maths and like I said the part about the calculator um, they also said school was important because there are students who are not self-motivated and I thought that was an interesting one because when you send your child to school the teacher kind of coaxes them or probes them or encourages them to participate, tells them what to do, tells them what to look for and stuff like that. So it's not every child that is going to go on YouTube or Google or know what to ask or know what kind of information that they need. So he was talking about the guidance and direction aspect of, you know, traditional education, which I thought was a useful take on it. Um, also school involves people, the social element, the practical, also, you know, when you go on Google, it just gives you an answer. And what they were saying is that when you're in the classroom, you can actually, if you don't understand something, you can ask the teacher, um, about, you know, to explain or clarify what you don't understand. You don't have that with Google or Alexa or anything like that. Um, he also said it was natural to go to school. I'm not quite sure what he meant by it's natural to go to school, but he reckoned it was a natural progression, a natural part of life to go to school, to meet people, to interact, to have that um, teacher-pupil relationship. Um, and um, yeah, I'm not quite sure what else he meant by it being a natural progression going to school but I guess what he meant is that everybody does it I, I assume um, he also said sitting in front of a screen and um, is unhealthy mentally and physically and that's another thing you know it's fine telling them to learn on YouTube and Google and Alexa but you have to think that these kids mind you with Alexa you just speak it out and it tells you you don't really need a screen but by and large, um, these kids are looking at screen all the time. Um, there's arguments in favour of the internet, is that it's portable, it's accessible 24-7, you can get different points of view on it. Um, you learn how to interact with others, but it's on a kind of a virtual level they're not real people are they you don't get to see them you don't get to mix and talk and have fun and meet after school that kind of stuff um school understands boundaries respects um, different modes of communication and cultures you get to learn all about that um like I said, one one um, student, he puts faith in, edu in the education they receive, which, you know, is not always good because young people are impressionable. So what they learn, they assume it to be true. And that's not always the case. So that could be a little bit of, of trouble. But I think as they grow older, they will learn what is true from what is not true. And I think at that point, once they've got the foundation um, sorted, they can always build on that. Um, also that the internet is not reliable he was saying um, you know you don't know who's giving you the information you don't know whether or not it's credible or you know if somebody's just come up and said anything you know so that was another point does the meet does the internet tell the truth so their arguments um, I've got to turn these things down. Gadgets, that's what I mean. They're a bloody pain in the butt, aren't they? Um, <clears throat> so there's arguments for and against the digital way of learning versus the way we've always done it. Um, digital learners prefer receiving information quickly from multiple multimedia sources, but the traditional um, educators prefer a slow release of information. So that's a kind of a conflict in both in ways of learning. And I was trying to think, you know, um, conventional educators prefer conventional methods. Multi multitasking is partial attention and they prefer that you focus on one thing at a time. So um, I think it's really, um, what was I going to say? was something I was going to say then and it's gone right out of my head. Oh, it'll probably come back to me. Yeah, so when I'm thinking about um, 
the digital learners versus you know traditional learners there is a lot of um, conflict and probably why young people get bored in school probably why they get distracted probably why they're getting expelled because they're not compatible the teachers are traditional most of them and conventional ways of learning is not going to work with young people who, who have hyperlinked minds whose minds go from one level to another whereas with the um, traditional conventional educators they have a linear way of thinking and teaching so it's not it's, it's not compatible so are the educators out, uh, outdated that is the title of this video are they outdated or can they be bothered to get on to the next level and be on par because what you're finding now is that the young people know more in certain areas than the people who are teaching them but I still feel that the educators there are certain things that only time and experience can teach you so I think that is where the educators come in and I also think they should adapt the curriculum so that young people learn life skills so yes they learn the basics the English the maths the arts the science the physical education the history the geography but they reinforce it with the life skills I wrote down a few which I think would be useful for them to add to the curriculum which is problem solving creative thinking digital skills not how to create a document but how to improve technology what can you do to make technology even better um, collaboration skills engineering computer science I mean computer science is a transferable skill and that encourages creativity, problem solving, ethics, and you can use it in any um, career. So I think it's a balance of uh, both the um, digital world and the traditional world. If they could find that balance so that children are not ahead of the game, but you can rein them in by teaching them practical and even emotional intelligence that's another skill that that should be learned in school you know so um, yeah so what shall I do now shall I just run through this what I've written down just so you can get an idea of what I've been where my mind is at and how I brought things together okay um, the digital generations learn differently than how we learned it's important that teachers understand how they learn and interact with the world in order to teach more effectively the digital generation thrive on creative and engaging activities varied sources of information and a more energetic environment if the classroom changes to adapt there may be less disruption in the classroom and less expulsions um, when you think about robots artificial intelligence and automation um, this is this is the world that we live in and um, and these when you think about young people these days they're not how we were when we were three year old I mean when you think about three year olds they're playing around with I think even a one year old we had a was using a phone and knew how to scroll up and do all that kind of things and select so we're dealing with um, children with a very uh, advanced mind very quick very fast paced um, and when you think about what the gentleman in the video is isolation versus socialization because it's fine saying oh yeah you can pick up Alexa and you can um, say hey Google but you're doing that in the confines of your home and you're not mixing with anybody and I don't know what happened to your social skills if you're just isolated like that and you're only take and you're taking what people say as gospel because by saying Alexa tell me this you're taking what Alexa tells you as gospel you're not there's no kind of argument there's no to and fro you've got no one to engage with no one to ask an opinion about it so I don't agree that um, there shouldn't be any schools at all um, like I said technology is a one-to-one -one relationship um, school group dynamics 
different points of view, a shift in what children need because of the changes brought by technology and automation. There will be devices that will explain what something is, even though you can't read it through signs and symbols. Yeah, somebody, you know, I was asking somebody else about the um, whether or not they felt that the education system was outdated. And he was saying that there will be a time when you don't even need to be able to read. There'll be something, you know, there'll be some kind of device or some kind of mechanism that will actually tell you what it is. You might touch it and it might say, oh, I am a lamppost or, you know what I mean? So, I mean, it's a bit far fetched, but the way things are going, I was listening, I was watching something, it was called the Project Soli. And Project Soli is that you use, it's, made, it's radar and sensors and they use your hand and your hand can do um, stuff from a distance. You know, it doesn't even have to touch your phone. You do something with your hands and it actually sensors make make the phone or the, the tablet work. They've also something, got something called Project Jacquard, which they've got sensors in the clothing and the clothing um, will kind of adapt to who you are and be able to tell whether or not that clothing is suitable for you and all this kind of stuff. That, you know, it's it's absolutely crazy. Jacquard, it's J-A-C-Q-U-A-R-D. For those of you who may want to look it up, because I'm not quite sure if I took the link on that one, to be honest. But it's called Project Jacquard, and it's talking about putting sensors in material. And, you know, I think you probably a lot of you know about Project Soli, Soli or Soli. It was uh, Project Abagus with Google. And um, it's now, I'm not even sure where we are with that at the moment. But yeah, that is something you need to look up. Do you read me, I tell you? Anyway, there will be devices that will explain, oh yeah, I've done that. The world is not reacting fast enough to update our system of education. According to analysis of 750 occupations by McKinsey Global Institute, 51% of job activities highly susceptible to automation, which could necessitate the redefinition of most occupations and requisite skills. A student that begins primary school today will graduate from university in the mid-2030s and their career will last through 2060 or beyond. While we can't predict exactly what our workforce needs, will be in the middle of the century, we already know they are changing and will continue to change with the rate of technology, technological advancement. Yet in most schools you visit in 2018, you see your teachers teaching in exactly the exact same subject matter as they were taught in 1918. Isn't that interesting? They haven't moved on. And that's why I'm saying, are these um, educators equipped to deal with the digital generation? You know, if they're still talking about, you know, subjects, subject matter that was taught in the 1918 and they're teaching it today just because of tradition and convention, they are outdated because so much has moved on. They really need to get with the programme. Um, it's more than bringing a PC into a classroom to make it look as though you're up on it because you'll get a lot of these teachers. They kind of come with these new words or new phrases or hand gestures and think that they, oh, they're telling the students that they're with it or they're hip or whatever the word is, they're fly or whatever it is. But um, the fact of the matter is, is that some of them don't have a clue. As far as modern children and modern education, some of them do not have a clue. They're still teaching traditional ways and it's fine to teach them traditional ways if they're explaining the relevance it has in today's world. If they're teaching maths in the old way, they would need to explain how relevant that is today. And so with all the subjects that they teach and give them examples, if they're teaching banking and accounting, how does that work with saving and money management and credit cards and, um, you know, overspending or that kind of stuff. Link it with 
something that's relevant with the child today so the child doesn't disassociate themselves and think what has this got to do with me how can I use it so I think it, there might be something very valid in the subject matter of 1918 but you would have to link it with the children's lifestyles of today um, let me see they believe that by saying that, oh, I've done that. Apart from maths, English, literature, language, science, geography, history, arts, music, visual arts, the classroom should also include, I've already said that, the problem, just, yeah, all that kind of stuff. Are teachers even equipped to qualify to teach the new digital generation? Many children and young people are not being adequately challenged and know more than the teachers who are employed to teach them. A lot of topics today will no longer be essential. In the 2030s, handwriting is increasingly obsolete. Complex arithmetic is no longer done by hand. And the internet has replaced the need to memorise many basic facts. But I think it's important for us to try and memorise because the brain will go dead if it's just relied on being fed all the time and not actually using any cognitive skills. It's just going to die. And we're all going to become like bloody robots and zombies. So I think it is important. I mean, my handwriting, I do handwrite still. My handwriting is getting abominable because my brain is too fast. So what I'm finding is when I'm writing, my, I'm writing at such a speed that I, sometimes I can't even read it back. And it's almost like I can't even control it. So it's like the brain is going faster than my fingers. So... Sometimes it is better for me to type. I type about between 75 to 80 words a minute. And that's probably about right. It's kind of in sync with my brain. But, you know, yeah, I can see how handwriting is increasing. But then again, who is it becoming increasingly obsolete to? There's a lot of people who are not computer literate and who are not handwriting. So this applies. Well, I think yes, they're talking about young people. And I think m probably most young people should be able to write, hopefully. But, you know, you get travellers and you get people who are not in the general um, or kids who are, you know, kept at home who are homeschooled and they, they can't go to school because they're looking after family, even though it's illegal. But you do get that. So you do get um, young people who can't write. So um, but there again, they might not be able to write, but they'd be able to use the Internet and be able to tell it what to do, so for them. So can foundational education keep up with the evolution of skills required to solve problems in its current format and prepare the digital generation for the future? To be creative, innovative and to be successful. Educators, education leaders should discuss removing aspects of the 100-year-old curriculum and replace it with relevant 2019 curriculum but that would require teachers to have a new set of skills that the majority um, probably would not be competent in. Our schools should teach the curriculum of the future, not just the curriculum of the past. Already many countries have begun to embrace computer science as a part of their national curriculum. In the US, 44 states have changed policies to recognise computer science as part of, of the academic core. Beyond the US, more than 25 countries have announced plans to expand school day access to computer science. This group includes UK, Australia, Japan, South Korea, Argentina, Ecuador, Italy, Malaysia, Sweden and Thailand. So we're on the ball with the computer science, which is good. Uh, teaching computer science in schools may sound intimidating, but it is an idea that generates hope. It inspires teachers and engages students. Even though the majority of world teachers don't have experience in computer science and many of the world's lack connected computers, these are problems we can and should solve. Countries such as Brazil, Chile and Nigeria are building plans to tackle these challenges and the rest of the world should follow suit. The future of work may be uncertain but there is one thing that is absolutely clear computer science will be in greater demand than ever 
before and every student in every school should have an opportunity to learn it as a part of the curriculum. So if it's on our curriculum in the UK, that's good. Um, so yeah, it is about finding a balance um, and what they're being taught is relative. You know, electronics they can learn, IT literacy, self-defence, carpentry, the basic understanding of electrics. I think it's also important for them to learn about team building, as I said, emotional intelligence, communication, oral, presentation, written, visual, about body language, the art of competition, and... Um, Okay, homeschooling has its place because you have parents and role models who can teach the children the trade. You know, we had a time when the fathers, if they were mechanics, they would teach their children to be mechanics. Or if they were construction workers, they would teach their children that, and, you know, or bankers, and they would teach them. You know, we don't have much of that. And you have young people saying, oh, you know, it's not relevant. I'm not going to make no money off of that. Young people are all about money. They just want to make money. So, um, so it's important for them to understand how what they're learning is going to be able to provide for them and their family. And if it's not, what is the point of learning it? So it's important to kind of make a link with what is being taught and how that can be then transcend the school system into a life after school. Um, I think I have covered everything with that. So yeah, I hope, I, I, yeah, I expect to get quite a few comments on this one. So let me know your thoughts and thank you for listening. Bye bye.